In this video, we're again looking at the DNS system, only this time we're looking at abuses of that system. The talk in question is called Redirecting DNS for Ads and Profit. It's a talk given by Nick Weaver about a paper that he and his colleagues wrote. And if you run across a video of him giving the talk, I highly recommend watching it as he gives a much more entertaining version than mine. But without introduction, let's get started. Again, in this video, we have the benefit of using the author's slides. The general topic is looking at how DNS results may be manipulated from the true results that the DNS database returns to what the client ends up seeing. So the first question is how many users see DNS errors? And the reason for looking at DNS errors is that these are often the results that are changed. We've mentioned before that the local recursive resolver is an important part of the DNS architecture because it takes load off of the core DNS hierarchy. So if you look up google.com, for example, and your neighbor looks up google.com, they both go through the same recursive resolver. It can cache the first result and serve it to subsequent lookups. So rather than the DNS core hierarchy having to answer that query over and over again, the recursive resolver can cache it and give it back to multiple users. This also benefits the users because the round trip time between them and the recursive resolver is probably much lower than the round trip time between them and the DNS hierarchy. So most users by default are using their ISP's recursive resolver to look up DNS queries. Sometimes they may look up a non-existent domain, either because it has expired or because of a typo. In this case, the DNS hierarchy gives back a result called an NX domain. This is a DNS error, meaning non-existent domain. The recursive resolver then is supposed to return this NX domain error back to the client so that the browser can display an error to the user saying, this domain doesn't exist and suggest that they check their spelling or something along those lines. However, in many cases, the internet service provider instead redirects it to a DNS response rewriter. So it takes the NX domain and returns back an IP address instead. So now it's telling the client that this is in fact a valid query and redirecting it somewhere. That result sends the browser to the redirection server, which gives back an HTTP redirect that sends them to an ad server. So now this becomes a way to serve more ads to the user rather than telling them that they went to an invalid domain name. The ad servers are typically maintained by a third-party monetization provider outside of the ISP in question. So the talk is on how this behavior is detected and categorizing the different types of responses that are observed. In addition to NX domain wildcarding that we just outlined, there's also the issue of search redirection. The measurement infrastructure is being run by ICSI at Berkeley and consists of front-end servers and back-end servers. This allows the researchers to query their own DNS infrastructure so they know for certain what results are supposed to come back and can compare what they see on the client end against that ground truth. ICSI also deployed a tool called Netalyzer that allowed them to perform automated queries against their own DNS servers. Netalyzer had the added benefit of allowing the end user to find out if there are issues with their home ISP or network. This client performed a whole battery of tests and we're not looking at the results of all of those. We're specifically focusing on certain DNS results. The same group has published many more results focusing on other results of their Netalyzer test suite. So first they're testing to make sure that their DNS query for their own test server returns the correct IP address. So first they're doing a lookup for their own test suite server. And this allows them to find out the IP address of the DNS resolver that's generating the request. So remember the client is running this query through a local DNS resolver, and that resolver then has to talk to the authoritative server run by the Netalyzer folks, and so they learn what DNS resolver is performing the lookup for the client. The test suite then looks for wildcarding by doing DNS queries for non-existent domains. So they know that they should be getting back an NX domain, but if instead they get back an A record, they know that DNS wildcarding is taking place, redirecting those NX domain errors to some other website. If that is detected, then they contact the redirection server and capture the page contents to understand what's happening there. 
Lastly, in the test suite, it looks up a number of important names. These are things like banks or PayPal or other authoritative sites that should direct the client to known web servers. If any invalid results are detected in that process, then they'll look at the IP address provided and capture that information. So we saw in step two that if redirection is detected, they'll capture those redirection pages and examine them. So they looked for patterns in these redirection pages. So at this point, the user's NX domain has already been redirected to a website. And so the client is loading a page that will eventually redirect them to an ad server, presumably. The researchers set up a number of rules in order to tag the captured redirection pages in order to see what sort of mechanisms they're using to redirect the client. They're then able to take these redirection pages and, and look at the IP addresses of the redirection page servers in order to figure out which vendors are providing the service. So the vendors that we're talking about now are the ones providing the redirection and ad serving technology, not the ISPs that are using it. So there are a number of these and they have different behaviors. So some providers just wildcarded names beginning with www, that includes these four, but some providers wildcard all NX domain errors. Some use HTTP 302 redirects. So these are header information redirecting the browser, whereas others load a page with JavaScript and a meta refresh. So that's dependent on the client's JavaScript in order to perform the redirection. And one of them uses the JavaScript mechanism, but obfuscates it to make it difficult for humans to read. So these three publicly offer HTTP 404 monetization, meaning not only is it redirecting DNS requests, but the actual valid web pages that the user requests are going through some sort of proxy that looks for an HTTP 404 and includes ads on that page as well. These services are supposed to allow an opt-out for the user. However, the researchers found that the Paxfire opt-out mechanism was actually fake. Another related product is search monetization. So in this case, anytime there would be a search in the browser search bar, Paxfire's proxy would be able to look at this search and even modify the results coming back from Yahoo, Bing, or Google. This, of course, is considered a major problem by those search providers in that the results that they're returning to the user may be changed on the way through the ISP. Google seemed to be handled differently than Yahoo and Bing at this time, but it should be noted that this sort of behavior is what drove all the search engines to switch over to HTTPS in order to encrypt their responses and prevent them from being modified along the way. So the results observed at the time of this work are not repeatable today. It seemed that at the time, the searches from the browser were being analyzed for particular keywords. And so if the third party monetization service had clients that were interested in advertising to one of those keywords, then the search request would be redirected instead of being sent directly to the search engine intended. The researchers then investigated this with 10,000 keywords and mapped out some of the redirection chains. So from the Paxfire redirection server, it would go to Amazon and eBay marketing, also to the Linkshare affiliates, the Google affiliate network, the ask.com affiliates, and the Commission Junction affiliates, as well as DoubleClick, which had been acquired by Google. So it's interesting that while the ISPs and their shareholder disclosures claimed that this generated one to three dollars in additional revenue per customer per year. So a pretty small fraction of what they are already billing their customers. They're willing to fundamentally change how DNS operates and introduce some significant privacy concerns. This motivates that DNSSEC validation must be performed on the client. For those not already familiar, DNSSEC is a way of signing DNS results and checking that signature at the client so that it cannot be changed along the way. Some changes to the behavior occurred very soon after these results were published. However, most ISPs still do some form of NX domain wildcarding. However, as mentioned, redirecting searches has become much more difficult now that the search traffic for all the major search engines has been moved over to HTTPS. That wraps up this talk. We hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next one. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it to be useful, please click the like button. To be notified when more videos are posted for this class, please subscribe to our channel and click the bell.